Hello children. Today I am here to discuss a science lesson relevant to grade 11 science syllabus that is unit 15 biosphere. As you already know this is a very important lesson for you because you are getting a compulsory question uh, for your science paper in all world examination. So I think it's very important to discuss the concepts uh, concept, uh, relevant to the biosphere. There are a lot of concepts to discuss in this lesson. So first let's see what is the environment. Simply we can say the environment is our surrounding. But in a standard way we can explain the environment in a complex uh, definition. That means the physical and biological components in which interactions take place for the existence of the organism is the environment. That means there are physical components as well as biological components in the environment. They interact together in order to uh, make a suitable place for the existence of the organisms. So that is the environment. In this definition, uh, you found two important words. That means physical components and the biological components. So what are these physical components? Physical components are the non-living things. As examples, soil, water, air. And along with the physical components, there are biological components as well. So the biological components are all the types of living organisms in the environment such as animals, plants and the microorganisms. In addition to those physical and biological components, there are environmental conditions also. They also affect all the organisms exist in this environment. So those environmental conditions are temperature, rainfall, humidity and the sunlight. So there are uh, different interactions take place among the physical components, organisms and the environmental conditions. Uh, because of those interactions, different type of uh, changes may happen in the environment. But the environment can make an equilibrium in between those components. That means a balanced relationship is uh, making in between organisms and the physical environment or the physical components. That is known as the environmental equilibrium. I think you know the meaning of equilibrium that is in simple way we can say equilibrium means balance. So in other words we can say ecological balance or environmental equilibrium. So environmental equilibrium means the balanced relationship between the organisms and the physical component uh, is equilibrium or environmental equilibrium. I think you can now understand what is environmental equilibrium. Although this equilibrium is taking place in the environment, a small change can be affect this equilibrium. But the environment has the ability to restore its conditions after a small change. But at present, there are so many complicated human activities which affect this equilibrium. So, uh, further you can learn about this uh, human activities which affect the environmental equilibrium and what are the ill effects of uh, human activities for the equilibrium later in this lesson. So, there are so many ill effects and uh, adverse effects happen uh, because of that uh, human activities to the environment. Then next, in this lesson, we have to talk about the organizational levels in the biosphere because uh, when we talk about the biosphere, there are different types of levels, different organizational levels in the biosphere. Now in this diagram, you can see uh, different organizational levels starting from the individual. Next, the population, community, ecosystem and the biosphere. So, uh, in this lesson, you have to find out what are these organizational levels and how to define them and what are the examples for each organizational level. 
Uh, this biosphere is normally organized from a simple level to a complex level. So we can consider about these organizational levels from a simple level to a complex level and it is starting from the individual. So we can write it as a flowchart and now you can see in the uh, screen uh, it is starting from the individual, next population, community, ecosystem and the biosphere. Then in the lesson, you have to find out uh, what is an individual, what is a population. Like that, you have to define all the types of organizational levels in detail. And uh, it's very important when you are writing uh, or when you are defining these organizational levels, you should use the appropriate words for them because if not, the meaning or definitions may uh, change. So when you are studying uh, about these organizational levels and their definitions, I think there are some uh, words to highlight and you should remember how to write the definition or how to define that organizational levels. So next uh, we will find out what are these organizational levels one by one. First the individual. So what is an individual? Individual is a single organism. Now, if you consider about the environmental uh, environment, places in the environment, there are different organisms. Single organism belong to a particular species and lives in the environment, is referred to as an individual. So here you have to uh, highlight the word species, particular species and live in the environment. A single organism belong to a particular species and live in the environment. Here uh, you have to understand this is only one organism. We consider only one organism. It may be a coconut plant, elephant, uh, mango plant, tiger, rabbit, any kind of single organism and that belong to a particular species. Then what is a species? This word is very important. What is a species? Species is a group of similar organisms who can interbreed naturally to produce a fertile offspring. Now here it's important uh, these uh, species are belong to a similar type of organisms. They are similar type of organisms that can interbreed naturally to produce a fertile offspring. What is a fertile offspring? Fertile offspring means if one generation is produced, that generation also should have the ability to produce a new generation. New generation. So that is called the species. I think it's clear to you. Then the next organizational level is population. Population means group of single organisms. Now you have already learned what is an individual. So if we take several individuals together or many individuals together, it becomes a population. So as a definition, we can say a group of organisms belong to the same species in a particular geographical location during a specific time period is called a population. So here you can see some words are highlighted, belong to the same species, particular geographical location and specific time period. So when you are writing or when you are defining a population, these words are very important because uh, when you explain about a population, they, uh, you have to say what kind of species and what is the geographical location where they, or where they live and what is the specific time period. And as examples, we can say, uh, now you can see the examples, the number of elephants lived in Yal National Park in year 2011. And the next example is human population, human population in Sri Lanka in year 2014. Now in these examples also you can see the species type is given, whether it is number of elephants, number of uh, human or number of any other animals like that and uh, particular geographical location is also given that means where are they uh, located that means uh, in Yala National Park or in Sri Lanka or in uh, India or in uh, any other geographical location.
and the specific time period is also important. That means we have to indicate or we have to say where they uh, or in which uh, year they uh, lived or what is the time period we are talking about. So whether it is 2011, 2014 or uh, in a month like that. Then the next organizational level that is the community. Simply we can say number of populations form a community or in a uh, standard definition we can say a group of different populations interact with each other in a particular area that is community. A group of different populations interact with each other in a particular area is referred to as a community. That means different populations should live together. Now, in the picture you can see, uh, if we consider about any uh, forest or grassland, several populations live together. So, it becomes a community. Then, as examples for the community, we can say animal community in Yala National Park or mangrove plant community in Nigambo Lagoon area. Like that, uh, there are several examples we can uh, use to understand what is a community. Then, uh, the next organizational level is ecosystem. Uh, I think already you have heard this word ecosystem because when you are learning about the environment, we use this word uh, most of the time. And ecosystem means all the communities, all the communities and the non-living components with which they interact. That means uh, when the communities live in the environment, they have interactions with the uh, non-living components or we can say uh, with the uh, physical components in the environment. So when they have interactions like that, we call it as an ecosystem. So the definition is all the communities and the non-living components with which they interact in a particular area is called as an ecosystem. So there are so many examples for ecosystems, a pond, a decaying log, a forest, a beach with rocks and cliffs or grasslands, there are so many ecosystems in the environment. So in this diagram you can see a pond ecosystem. So you can uh, find various animals are there, various types of plants are there and uh, if you can see the sun and uh, other types of physical components are also there in the environment. So all of them are interact with each other in order to exist in the environment uh, in a suitable way. Then the next organizational level is biosphere. Biosphere means the places where the organisms live. Now, already you have learned about different types of organizational levels in, in, from individual to the ecosystem. And there are so many places in the environment where the animals or plants can live. So, all the types of places, all the places where living organisms live is referred to as the biosphere. So, we can uh, define it as the part of the earth and its atmosphere that is inhabited by the organisms or the living things is called biosphere. That means not only the land environment, there are so many other uh, places where the animals or the plants or the microorganisms can live such as water, atmosphere like that. So uh, biosphere means the all places where the organisms can live. So the biosphere can be divided into three uh, parts because uh, the organisms are, they are distributed in different places. So the three components or three parts of the biosphere are lithosphere, hydrosphere and the atmosphere. Lithosphere means the land environment. It is made up of the crust and the upper mantle. And the hydrosphere, all the oceans and freshwater bodies are belong to this uh, part of the biosphere and I think you know 70% uh, of the earth's surface is covered with water and the next uh, part is the atmosphere that is the region contain air around the earth. Now you can see in this uh, picture about the three parts of the biosphere.